Hello and welcome to the absolutely simplest backpropagation example. This video is for you if you want to understand neural network training using gradient descent and uh, backpropagation. And you've looked at textbooks or other sources where the treatise is a little bit too abstract or generalized and it's hard to grasp the basic principles. In this video we're going to be looking at a neural network that consists of two layers the input and the output layers with one node each. There is no bias unit and there is just one single weight between the two nodes. The output activation is defined as the multiple uh, of the input value and the weight and there is no nonlinearity or activation function involved. The weight is randomized as per usual and for a training set we use a single data input output pair for the input value 1.5, we would like the output activation to be 0 0.5. With the random weight, the output is uh, 1.2, so there is some work to be done. The way we train or uh, optimize neural, neural networks is by changing the weights in such a way that the output activation becomes correct. And this process of optimization or training is driven by the error or cost function. <clears throat> a commonly used error function is the mean squared error and that's what we are going to be uh, using. It is simply the difference between the output and the desired output squared. <clears throat> uh, seeing as it is that uh, the error function is affected by the output activation we have to start asking ourselves questions such as how should A change for error to decrease? But of course, uh, since we cannot directly change the output activation, we have to go one step further and ask ourselves, how should the weight change for A to change in such a way that error decreases? And this whole process of going back, uh, kind of backtracking through the network is called backpropagation. More formally, let's look at the error function that we're trying to minimize. So this is a plot of the error function um, as a function of the output activation. And what we're trying to decide um, with this current uh, training set, where the output activation is 1.2 and the error therefore is 0 0.5, where do we have to change the output activation? How do we have to change it in order to minimize the cost? So this is where the term gradient descent comes from. We are descending along the cost function in the direction of the negative of the gradient in order to get down to this uh, minimum here where the error goes close to zero. So we need the gradient or in this uh, one-dimensional case it's called the derivative of this expression with respect to a. And of course that's very simple uh, the rate of change of the cost function with respect to a is simply to a minus y. And this is what it looks like when plotted. So on this side of the minimum uh, we decrease the value of a. So we, we change the value of a proportionately to the negative of the gradient or derivative in this case. So now we have our answer. Um, the negative, uh, sorry, how does A have to change for error to decrease? Here we have the negative of how A has to change for error to decrease. What about W? Uh, remember, this is the only variable in the network. How do changes in W change A? Well, we know that the activation is defined as I times W, so the rate of change is 1.5, or the input value so when W changes, the output activation changes by that same amount times 1.5. So the answer, 1.5 is the rate of change. At this point, we have to take a little pause and remind ourselves of the chain rule of differentiation. You may have learned this in school, and there's nothing new here. But if you have an outer function f, which is a function of the inner function g in this case, the derivative of uh, the outer function f with respect to x is simply the derivative of x relative to, uh, sorry, g uh, relative to x times the derivative of f. 
Now, this is really, really useful because in neural networks, um, the functions are going to be composite functions in a big way. I mean, there are going to be several layers. Uh, it's going to be a function of another layer, of another layer, of another layer, of another layer. And it helps that using the chain rule, we can just keep adding these factors uh, in front. So we have the rate of change of the final layer with respect to the previous layer, the rate of change of that layer with respect to the next layer. And you can see how the chain rule works here. This is where the word chain rule comes from. This, is, this kind of looks like a chain, doesn't it, with these links. And, and finally, we have the rate of change of something with respect to the variable x. So that's what we're going to do for our simple example here. We are trying to minimize the error function with respect to w. So we need the rate of change of this function with respect to w, and we will then start changing w proportionately to that. The cost function is a function of a, which in turn is a function of w. Therefore, we can use the chain rule. The rate of change of the cost function is the multiple of the rate of change of the cost function with respect to a, um, and the rate of change of the activation with respect to w. And that's the answer to our question. How much uh, or how should w change for a to change in such a way that error decreases? The answer is in this derivative. So let's spell that out. Uh, the rate of change of the cost function with respect to a is simply that when you put all the numbers in. The rate of change of the output um, activation with respect to w, as we saw before, is 1.5. Here we go. The multiple is uh, the rate of change of the output activation with respect to w times the rate of change of the cost function with respect to w as well. So 4.5 times w minus 1.5. To recap, uh, we are trying to find the rate of change of the cost function with respect to w. And that's the expression that we get. So now it's the same shape that we saw before, but the minimum is in a different place. This is the minimum for the weight. And if we look at the slope, this gives us the direction at each uh, point um, for where we need to change uh, the weight. As I said before, we change these variables uh, proportionately to the negative of the gradient. So on this side, the gradient uh, or the derivative being positive, we decrease the weight. There is one more piece to the puzzle that we require, and that is the learning rate. We already know the direction and that is given by the gradient, but imagine if you take this value 1.2 and you just simply subtract from this weight 1.2, you would end up way over here. And this is called the exploding gradients problem. And it usually looks like something like this. You end up bouncing off of these walls and climbing out of this bowl, if you will, and getting further and further away from the minimum. Uh, typically, learning rates are fairly small, uh, below 1. To recap, um, we get the direction of the adjustment from the negative of the gradient. The learning rate needs to be used. Um, to, to prevent exploding gradients. We multiply the negative of the gradient uh, by the learning rate, and that adjustment is backpropagated through all layers in the network. So finally, this is what it looks like. We're going to use the learning rate 0 0.1, which just seems to work for this example. Um, you typically have to do some experimentation um, before you find the, the perfect learning rate for your problem. So we take the previous weight value or the current weight value, in this case 0 0.8, and we subtract from it the gradient multiplied by the learning rate. And this is what it looks like. The, from the current uh, weight 0 0.8, we go down to 0 0.59. And 
continuing, taking this weight to be the, the current weight and, and getting the next weight from the next optimization step, uh, we get down to 0 0.47 and so on until we get closer and closer to 0 0.33333 and the output starts getting closer to 0 0.5. So that's it. We've gone through a number of optimization steps, maybe five or six steps would have been adequate for this case. And we have optimized the network so that it produces the correct or close enough to the correct answer. So that's it. Now we can also generalize this for several layers and you might have been wondering about this. Uh, the chain rule of differentiation works every single time all we have to do is add another gradient. So the rate of change of this uh, activation with respect uh, to the weight in question. And the front part stays the same. So by the time you're here at the fourth weight, you no longer have to calculate this. You just carry it over from the, the previous layers. So for example, um, Adjusting weight 3 would look like this. Uh, the weight 3 uh, minus learning rate times the activation of the previous layer times the weights in front. And, and then finally the, the derivative of the cost function. And the way to understand this intuitively is that the higher the value is of the activation preceding this weight and the, the more quote-unquote clear the path forward from there, the more effect this weight has on the cost function. So if any of these were zero, then we would simply say, okay, this weight has no um, impact. It, it, it doesn't get carried forward uh, through these weights into the activation. Therefore, we don't make any kind of adjustment at all. But if the values are high, then we make a, a bigger adjustment. So anyway, that's how we can generalize the several layers. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please write below and like this video. Thank you. Have a good day.